Okay, uh, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the heart. In this video, what we're going to talk about is gap junctions between cardiac muscle cells. Okay, so gap junctions is the topic uh, for this video. Okay, so gap junctions. Right, so, uh, the structure for this video then. We're firstly going to talk about the intercalated discs that are between cardiac uh, myocytes within the heart. We're then going to look at the structure of gap junctions. We're then going to look at the function of gap junctions. And finally, what we'll look at is a drug, namely rotig rotigaptide, uh, which is um, basically an enhancer of uh, gap junction function and is currently, I believe, in clinical investigation uh, for whether it will be useful in treating atrial fibrillations. All right, okay, and other forms of dysrhythmia as well, but the atrial fibrillations, I believe, are the main one that they think it might be useful in. Right, okay, so, gap junctions then. We'll begin with the intercalated discs. So, basically, if you take the heart, if you take a piece of heart muscle and you look at it under the microscope, what you see is a huge number of cardiomyocytes that look like this. So little squares of cells, because cardiomyocytes really are little squares of cells. And basically, each cardiomyocyte is connected to the next cardiomyocyte, like so. So there is this disc in between them. So remember that each of these is just a, all I'm drawing is a 2D picture of it. In actual fact, each one of these will be a little sort of cylinder shape. So the connection between adjacent cardiomyocytes is going to be a disc rather than just a line here. But that's why they're called intercalated discs. So this joining of the two cardiomyocytes, this is known as an intercalated disc. Right, and this intercalated disc, this junction between two cardiomyocytes, and I'll just label up the cardiomyocytes, so this is a cardiomyocyte, which is short for cardiac myocyte, okay? Um, so, the actual connections that you form between two cardiac muscle cells, some of those are gap junctions, okay? Right, so let's have a zoom-in picture of this intercalated disc. So here are the two membranes, okay? Right, now, you have two major forms of connection between these cardiomyocytes. Uh, one which is an electrical connection, which is the gap junctions, and one which is actually a structural connection, which is holding the two together. So the one which is holding the two together is something we're not going to study, and instead we're just going to sort of draw a box and colour it in and give it its name. Okay, so the structural connection between the two uh, cardiomyocytes, and you don't just have one of these, you'll have multiple of them uh, in between the two um, cells. So let me draw multiple of them. Okay, these are what are known as desmosomes. So I will label them up as desmosomes. So this is a desmosome. Okay, so you have these protein connections between adjacent cells, which are desmosomes, and you're also going to have um, you're also going to have electrical connections between these two cells, which are also within this intercalated disc. So the intercalated disc is just the uh, junction between one cardiomyocyte, let's call it cardiomyocyte A, and cardiomyocyte B here. So it's this junction between the two. And you're going to have loads and loads of these uh, these um, desmosomes that are holding the two membranes together. And you'll also have an electrical communication between the two in the form of a gap junction. So let's now discuss what a gap junction is. Right, okay, so I'm going to draw a, a bigger picture of this because this membrane here is a little small to show it. Right, so let's draw the two membranes zoomed up now. So here is cardiomyocyte A and here is cardiomyocyte myocyte B. So, what is a gap junction then? A gap junction consists basically of two structures known as connexons, okay? So let me show these. So, each of the cells that we're joining together electrically is going to provide a connexon. So, this is the connexon from cell A, and here, comes the connexon from cell B. 
So this is the connexon from cell B. Okay, so these two connexons basically are going to join together and make a complete gap junction. So this here, this is what's known as a connexon. Connexon, which is also referred to as a gap junction hemichannel, so a half of a gap junction. And you can understand why it's called that, because you have to put two of them together to make the full gap junction. So this is a gap junction hemichannel. Okay, so when the two join together, what will happen is maybe it will look something like this now. So you've got these two connexons, or these two gap junction hemichannels, joined together now. So here is the joining point. So let me make this crystal clear. So let's label the connexon, well, let's colour in the connexon from, um, from uh, my cardiomyocyte A. We'll colour that in green. So here is this connexon here, joined together with the connexon from cardiomyocyte B, which we'll do in orange. So here is this other connexon from cardiomyocyte B, which is in orange, and the two of them have joined together here to make what is now called a gap junction. And there are a bunch of other names for a gap junction, so I just want to go over these. So this is a gap junction. Gap junction is the most common name you'll hear for this, but there are some other names which you can also hear for this. So it's also occasionally called a nexus. I have never actually ever heard anyone refer to a gap junction as a nexus, but you can hear. Um, it's, uh, it's a textbook name that you will hear people talk about, well, you will see in textbooks at least. You, I've never actually heard anyone use it though. Also, a name that histologists like uh, is they often call it macular communicans. Communicans. Okay, so uh, macular, I think, just means um, region, basically, spot, uh, that is for communication, basically, the, the communication point, basically. Macular, I think, just means region, basically. Okay, so macular communicans is another name for a gap junction. Okay, so a gap junction is made up of these two connexons, uh, which are also called gap junction hemichannels. What is the structure of the connexons, then? We now want to look at that. So, if we draw a connexon out, let's draw a connexon here. Let's have a look at what the actual structure of this connexon is. So here is one of these connexons, drawn nice and largely here. And basically, what they are, is they are a channel through the cell membrane. So they've got this channel, like so. And um, basically, they are a hexaba. They are made up of six components. So I'll try and draw this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six components all joining together to make this um, connects on this gap junction hemi channel. Okay, and one of these individual portions that joins together to make the gap junction hemi channel. So one, just one of these portions that makes up the hexamer here, which I've drawn in pink here. This is what's known as a connexin protein. So the connexon is a hexamer of connexin proteins. Okay, so this is a hexamer which just means a six-membered um, six membered structure. It's made up of six different proteins joined together. Now, basically, connexin proteins, there are absolutely loads of them. There's not just one connexin protein. And when you want to make a connexon, this hexamer, you can either use all of the same connexin to make a homo, uh, homo hexamer, so you can make a homo hexama, which basically means that you use the same connexin in all six slots, basically, to make your connexon, okay? Or you can actually use different connexin proteins, and that will create you a heterohexama, hetero meaning different. Okay, uh, so um, basically there's a huge scope of different connexons that you can actually build. Okay, so in cardiomyocytes, what you do is you take connexin proteins, you put six of them together to make connexons. Each cardiomyocyte is going to make a connexon, which is in its own membrane. The two connexons will join together in the sort of space between the two cells and will make a gap junction. Okay, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.